Hi, it's Deb. I'm back again with a, br a brief video. Well, maybe not that brief, but a bit of a, a demonstration to show you some work that I've been doing recently in colored pencil uh, based on some photos that I took of deer in our yard. And I'm using a variety of techniques and different products. So I'm going to be showing you uh, really what happens when I use something called a slice tool, which is a ceramic bladed uh, utility knife for texturizing or making fur in a colored pencil drawing. I'm also going to be glazing with different products, different types of pencils to be able to give depth to the slice marks that I put in. And uh, I hope you enjoy just watching me continue to work on refining the depth and the tone and the fur qualities on this beautiful deer picture uh, that I started on a few days ago. Anyway, enjoy. A little bit of purple that I want to use to darken up this shadow area just with some very light, gentle strokes. And also I want to add some depth of color to this side of the deer and just to deepen some of those values. Now, really I should be using a polychromos pencil for what I'm doing right now. For example, like this one, this is Mauve 249. And that works a little bit better to do some of this kind of glazing just because of the difference in the nature of the pencils. So the uh, luminance or the Derwent Lightfast uh, lay down a little bit heavier. They're a little waxier, I find. And as a result of that, um, when you're trying to simply glaze a shade on top of another, they I find them a little bit more difficult to control. So when you're doing this kind of detailing, um, you really have to pay attention to what pencil you're going to use first. So I'm just again laying down a little bit of this purple on an area where there would be or is some shadow in my reference photo. Now I'm also using this on the body of the deer uh, because it uh, jives with the colors that I've already got down here, which are some tans and some warm grays and uh, colors like that. So some people may feel this can get a little bit complicated, but it really doesn't have to be. And you can practice on small exercises to really learn the nuances of the pencils that you're using. <clears throat> so I'm going to go back in over this glazing again with olive green yellowish. Again, it's the Faber-Castell Polychromos. And I'm laying that over on top of some of that purple that I just put in, again, to deepen this shadow area and to um, just, hmm, I guess, give the color a little greater uh, complexity. Now, even though we've got a shadow area there, we still have some areas of highlight that will poke in and in here and there. And I'm going to use a Prismacolor, which is a waxier pencil, spring green, to draw in some of these bright, lighter strands or pieces of grass. Now I've already pulled out some color already using uh, my mono eraser and the mono eraser is this little guy here. I use this for all kinds of things but it's got a very fine point on it and I have to wipe it off on a piece of paper or on a kneaded eraser every now and then 
uh, to be able to um, get the bits of color off that it's picked up. So as you will see here, I can just stroke the paper very gently, uh, but strategically in places to bring up some of the color and then go in with the, sorry about that camera shake, go in with the spring green and add that highlight or lighter piece of grass, whatever you want to call it. I find the grass really challenging. I just haven't done a whole lot of it and uh, it definitely makes me have to really think about what I'm doing as I pick up a pencil and put it to the page. Okay, so I'm going to continue to add areas of depth onto this little guy. You can see there are darker places on the fur of the body, and but they're not quite dark enough. So I'm going to, again, use a shade of purple. This one is black grape. It's a Prismacolor. Now I'm going to use this very judiciously because this is a waxy type of pencil and I don't want it to be too pronounced, but I want a little bit more depth in some areas, like right under the chin. So you see here, just along the edge of the jawline, just very carefully laying in this grape color. Now I can see that that looks a little bit, little bit too purplish for me. So I'm going to soften it just a bit with a sort of a medium tan color, but I want to be really careful because that neck area is still fairly light. So this is a Caran d'Ache Burnt Ochre 10%. This one's very handy. I'm going to blend that in a bit. Watch what I do with this because it's kind of interesting. Blend, 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 blend. Now that made it come up and made it a little bit brighter, which isn't the outcome that I was looking for. So now I will grab my dark sepia. Again, here we go with the different types and the different layers. This is a Faber-Castell dark sepia. And this is the one that I use for glazing over the top of the heavier pencils and we're creating a little bit of a darker area. Uh, now another thing I'm going to use is the slice knife. Gosh, I'm throwing all the tricks of the trade in here at this thing. And I'm gonna put a piece of, uh, film over top here to stop my hand from smudging everything that's underneath. So if you look carefully, you can see that I'm going to pull out some little fur strokes here on the neck where I just had applied that purple color. Every now and then you have to wipe the blade off so it gets kind of gummed up with pencil. Okay, so get that little brush. <clears throat> now I'm back at it with the sepia and watch what happens when I glaze over top of the knife work. It actually goes into the ridges where I use the knife and creates more depth in the fur. Nifty, hey? Eh? 
Now I've used the knife on this neck area uh, for texturing and to make the fur stand out a little bit more. But I want to be very careful about how I gradually bring down that darker color uh, because the, the fur still has some lightness about it, particularly over in this area. And the sun, or the light from the photo, in the, in the reference photo is coming from this direction. So this area is all actually quite overexposed in my reference photo. And as we get around the front of his neck here, we get into some darker areas. So I'm a huge fan of Lisa Ann Watkins, and she has a Patreon channel that I follow. And I also follow Bonnie Snowden's. So I've got two Patreon groups that I play in and uh, enjoy uh, learning in those environments and you know it's interesting both uh, Lisa and Bonnie are both colored pencil artists um, but they have a little bit of a different approach um, and I'm getting great benefit from following both of them for different reasons okay so now I'm going to add <clears throat> excuse me I'm going to add a little bit of the uh, lighter, lighter shade here for the edge of this guy's neck here. It uh, needs, to, needs to have a bit of a reflective quality, and, and yet it's not, it's not super white on the reference photo, so let's see what happens with this. So we're going to blend this out again a little bit. And this is a light, fast Arctic pencil from Derwent. Unfortunately, as you can see, I have all kinds of stuff that I use on these things. But I can go back in again after I put this smoothing layer down. And I can give it a bit of a slice with the slice knife. I guess the pun's intended there. And, uh, and then again, go in with the darker color. It just keeps increasing the depth of the fur. It's just such a fascinating technique. I just love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. So, there we go. Now, back at this, I think, with the buff titanium. Again, it's a heavier, waxier pencil. And it's going to kind of blur everything together here. You might wonder why I've got a hunk of tape on the end of my pencil. And uh, there's nothing particularly scientific about it. I marked this pencil because I had pulled some pencils out for a tutorial that I was doing from one of my uh, artists that I follow. And... I needed it for two different tutorials, so I stuck a hunk of tape on it so I would know that when I picked out my pencils, that one would apply to both projects. Kind of sounds crazy, but that's what I did. Anyway, and I haven't taken it off. So that's the mystery of the, the tape on the pencil. And sometimes I flip the knife over and I can feel that it gets a little more traction. Um, I'm trying to pay attention to the direction of the fur on the neck for this little guy. It's uh, something, if the fur is going the wrong way, it kind of throws the whole thing off. It's something that Lisa Ann Watkins keeps telling us. That and pay attention to your lights and your darks, your lights and your darks, because you know what? Regardless of what color you use, um, if the value, if the lightness or darkness is spot on, then it's going to look right. It's the strangest thing, but it's true. Okay, give it a brush. Yes, not he sweet? Okay. So now I'm going to go back over it again. Now I had used the dark sepia before 
to go back over it but this time I'm going to just lighten up a little bit with a walnut brown and there's a hunk of tape on that pencil too my goodness okay and so gently 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 glazing over here to bring up that fur detail so we've made the marks it's almost like embossing I think a little bit but do you see the fur coming alive with that walnut brown it's just magical so hopefully the sound is picking up okay I'm testing out a, a lapel mic uh, today I've been fooling around with different sound options um, when I make videos because it's very frustrating when you go and record something and then your audio is all messed up so hopefully this uh, mic I'm using today is uh, working well that doesn't look too bad still looks to me though like we need a little more darkness sorry I hit the pole with the, with the uh, tablet on it so I'm going to glaze over some more with Payne's Gray, and I'm going to do this right under his chinny chin chin. Again, depth, darkness, and light. attention to my reference photo now paints gray is sort of a I don't know it's a very um, utilitarian color it's something that you can use for all kinds of things it's not black and it's not a real cold gray or warm gray it's a well I guess it's sort of a bluey kind of gray it's really useful Okay, well, let's see how that looks. I think that's looking not too bad. It definitely has a little more depth to it. I like what I'm seeing. I'm going to go in now with some white. Uh, what have I got for white here? Here we go. This is, nope, that's the buff titanium. Oh, you know what? I picked up the oh, brown ochre 10% and was using that along with the buff titanium, so I might have confused you on that one. Um, but those two lighter colors is what I was using. So I've got the Faber-Castell white, which is a bit of a transparent white. But let's see if it helps to bring up some of the lighter pieces of fur here. I know this looks terribly random, but I really do think about what I'm putting down on the page to uh, try to get the effect that I'm looking for. I mean, this guy's coming along, no doubt about it. I need to sharpen this up a bit, I think. Where's my sharpener? not too bad it's bringing it up just just a little bit so interesting how this works okay now his chin is a little extreme looking here so I'm just blending that in just a little bit oops sorry for the wiggle keep doing that and we'll try to make some sort of hair reflections here if we can on this. So now I've still got some dark spots and dark areas, darker areas that I'm going to touch with the Payne's Gray again over, again just glazing 
in these areas of shadow. And some of these are deeper than others, of course. There's sort of this kind of bump of bump of fur here for this fellow. And I need to kind of get a little deeper as far as the the color is concerned. You know, this is a very creative medium and provides lots of opportunity for you to uh, experiment and sort of play around with color combinations and mixing and stuff like that. I'm back to Walnut Brown again. I'm going to deepen this, deepen this area a bit, but I don't want this spot too dark. I still want it to have a little bit of oomph of light. So I'm going to be careful. And the same here. I want to bring up some darker spots. Now I've used the knife in this area before and so this is just accentuating some of those slice marks. Okay, that's looking a little bit better, but I think there's still a little more that could be done. Okay, so let's see, what else could we do to deepen that? Um, okay, let's give this a go. This is Caput Mortem Violet. Funny name for a pencil, but it's sort of a brownie purple. And I'm going to give this a go here again in that darker spot where I want some richer tones to be here, but I don't want it to be a big blob of brown. So, this is a very, very versatile color as well. I like this one a lot. <clears throat> Okay, and I'm going to go back over that again with a brown, but this time I'm going to use, what am I going to use? I'm going to use Burnt Sienna. This has some red in it. Again, glazing over the top. I'm getting too many streaky marks here. Okay, so that warmed that up a little bit. That looks pretty good. And now we're going to uh, go in with... Mm, this might be too dark, but actually this is better. Ivory. And I don't have a super sharp point on this pencil, but... I'm going to use this ivory to bring in some light spots here again on top of the glazing that I just did. And this can be fairly effective. Just kind of pushing everything together there. And I want to use it to soften up this uh, fur here where it's kind of sticking up where his legs bent. It's kind of funny, but that's how it looks in the picture. Okay, so we've softened that up a bit. Okay. And now I'm going to try to give this another go with the knife. Again, just in these lighter spots. Time you use the knife, it just seems to continue to add 
another layer of depth to the quality of the fur. So you'll see as I'm moving along here how it brings that up. It's really nifty. Well, the slice is an interesting tool because it scrapes off some of the pigment, but used properly, it, um, it won't damage your paper. Now, the paper that I'm working on right now is Bristol Smooth, Strathmore Bristol Smooth uh, 300 series, I think. So it's not a super deluxe paper. I was using it sort of to test it out. I don't like using paper that's too rough, although I do like what's called sanded paper that you can get for pastel and for colored pencil. Um, I, I wanted to see how the smooth would respond, particularly to knife work on this thing. So. I'm quite pleased with it in the big scheme of things. It's looking not too bad. I need to pull out some of this. Now I'm making marks in this darker area, but then I'm going to go back in with the sort of medium brown pencil to reinforce those fur marks and um, not make it look too light, right? Because, I mean, when I started poking at this thing, I was trying to make it uh, have a little more light and dark areas that were somewhat distinctive so that sort of the values and the depth of the picture would improve. Otherwise, it just kind of looks flat, you know? So... Okay, so let's give that a quick brush, and I probably shouldn't go back and forth like that, but I do. Um, and so now we're going to go over and we're going to glaze with uh, Walnut Brown. Where's Walnut Brown? There we go. And this is going to pick up those slice marks we just made. Increase the depth. of the fur on the page. Ah, that's so cool. <laughs> Excuse me. And we're gonna pick up on the top here just a little wee bit. I'm gonna run the knife up there too. It's looking not too bad. Looks like fur. Okay, now I will go back in with the white. Don't want light fast, just because this is such an overexposed, brightly lit area of my reference picture. I'm just gonna kind of smudge all that in there. This pen, this uh, pencil is good for knife work because it leaves a fairly, of course depending on how hard you press, but it leaves a fairly heavy layer on the page. So now I'm going to go back in with the knife in this light area. And you'll see what happens when I do that. 
it gives that lighter area a little more depth and definition. Do you see that? Okay. So I think that's where I'm going to leave it for today. I just wanted to show you some of the techniques that I use when I'm doing a, a project like this. Um, you know, combination of the knife work, the layering of colors, and understanding or having a sense of the types of uh, pencils, the qualities of the pencils and the materials that you're putting on. It's, it's really no different, in my opinion, um, than work that you would do in acrylic, where you would take an acrylic paint, you would mix up a couple of different paints with different color sort of qualities to get whatever it was you wanted to paint on your canvas. And then you add things to the acrylic, like retardant to stop it from drying quickly and stuff like that and different glazing gels and those sorts of things. So there's a variety of combinations of products that you can use when you're doing artwork. And in the case of these pencils, there are different pencils that have different qualities and when you use them together, you need to be thoughtful about and intentional with the sequence that you apply them to the paper. Some of the outcomes depend on the type of paper that you're using, and some of the outcomes depend on the kinds of tools that you're using. So the slice knife is used for fur, making fur. The mono eraser is used for creating softer fur and outline edges and things like that. It's got a very, very fine point. Different pencils have different sorts of uh, qualities. The Derwent Lightfast pencils are a heavier waxier pencil. Um, they're wonderful pencils to work on, work with. Um, the Faber-Castell are also fabulous pencils but they go on differently. So you use them together to get different effects. And then one other thing just to mention, um, this looks kind of dodgy, but it's an old stiff paintbrush that I've used for doing things like blending out this background. So this brush moves the pencil wax around uh, to give me a softer muted background. So you can use that kind of thing and you can use that on fur as well. And I'm just trying to think if there's anything else here that might be... Yeah, no, I think that's good for now. Anyway, I hope you enjoy watching the bits and pieces of the techniques that I'm using on this deer and I'm hoping to have him done uh, within the next week or so. Um, and on to another one. I'm doing a series of deer pictures. I will post a video of one of the other pictures that I completed on drafting film. That will be in a, in a separate video. Anyway, have a great day. Thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoyed uh, my explanations of how the different elements of colored pencil work together. Bye for now.